Hey guys, welcome back. What we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to make farmer's cheese. A very simple cheese to make that anyone can do. First of all, we have two gallons of goat's milk. We have a double broiler that we use. This is a two gallon pot that will go inside of this pot here which we will put about roughly about an inch to three inches of water. The reason why you want to do a double broiler is that it keeps your milk from scorching. You want to make sure that it is an authentic stainless steel. So a simple test that you can do is just a simple magnet test. So listen how this attracts real quick. See that? That is an official stainless steel good pot. Same here reason why you want kosher is you don't want any iodine in your salt so it'll affect the color of your cheese. Some people would prefer a fine salt so it absorbs quicker into the cheese. We just get coarse and we have not had any issues. Also you want an acid so we get uh, a white distilled vinegar and then a measuring cup and then a measuring spoon. We also have a scale that we use to measure out our cheese. We also use a muslin cloth or a cheese cloth. The other things you're gonna need in your cheese making process is a thermometer. All right, let's jump right into this cheese making. That's what you're here for. All right, let's take a quick temperature of how cold our milk is. We're at 44 degrees in the milk. So we need to bring the milk up to 180 degrees and then we'll shut the heat off and then we'll add our acid. If you're wondering why my wife is not making the cheese and I'm making it, well, in our household, we kind of do everything together. If you saw some of our other videos, my wife cuts wood with us and I do some cooking. She also helps with it in the yard chores. We have kind of a, just a dual role and we do everything together. So cheese making has just been one of those things that I picked up and she helps me along the way. It's not that she can't do it. It's just one of those things that I've been doing. So we have reached our temperature of 180 degrees and I will show you where we're at with that. What you will see with your milk when it gets to this stage, it's not quite boiling, but you'll get these little bubbles that will indicate that the milk is getting almost to temperature. So you wanna lightly stir the milk just enough so that it's barely turning. As you can see, sometimes you may need a little more vinegar. See it starting to separate? We're gonna do just a little bit more, dash more. See the separation now? Okay, go ahead, pull that out. You can see the curd on the spoon. Sometimes when you're doing your cheese, you just need to improvise a little bit and add a little more acid as needed. I'm thinking that the milk that I put in there was just a little more than two gallons, and that's why we didn't get a separation right away. So, but that's an easy fix. Just add a little more acid. You can see that the curd is already starting to separate. Typically 15 to 30 minutes, you probably should, should be sufficient, but we've had it set anywhere from two to three hours, as long as the milk stays warm and you'll be fine. So we'll let this set probably for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes of setting, you can see that the curd and the whey have separated. This is a cheese curd spoon, which is also a good tool to have. And then we also use a colander. So we put the cheesecloth inside the colander and that'll help with the straining of the whey.
can see the whey is still coming out of the cheese, and that's what we're going to continue to work out of the cheese. So depending on how wet or dry you want it will determine on how long you let it set. I'm gonna dump this. So I'll just keep working this and let that uh, whey run out. And that's why I use a colander. So it allows me to work it a little bit more. So we drained it once. I'll show you how much more we have. I'm gonna go ahead and twist it, give it just a little bit of a twist. I'm gonna take my spoon and just kinda, since it's so hot, I'll just use my spoon to kinda continue to push the way out. Give it a nice tight wind and then we'll let that set for a minute or two and then we'll be ready to stir in the salt. Okay, see all this way? You can put it on your raspberry plants to help them or your trees, but we have get, gotten so much whey that we decided to do pigs and this will really help them grow. Or if you have a dog or a cat, you can put it on their, uh, on their feed and they'll love it too. Okay, so it is dripped for just a few minutes and just a few little drips. If you want it to be really dry, you could let it set for probably an hour or two. We like ours a little soft, so we're gonna go ahead and take it out of the muslin cloth and uh, put our seasonings in it. Back, look at that beautiful cheese. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that nice ball of cheese. And that's from two gallons of milk. I'm cracking it open. We're gonna open that up and we're gonna put some salt in that. So you will salt your cheese to your taste. For us, two gallons of milk, we like the salt ratio of one and a half tablespoons of salt. I'll do one half tablespoon now. Turn it in. Do another half a tablespoon. Turn that in. And then one final half tablespoon. This is not a melting cheese. This is more of a spreading cheese. And for crackers and putting it in dishes like ricotta or something like that. So at this point in the cheese, you can add any seasonings you want after you salt it to taste. We've added chives, we added, we've added garlic to it. Anything that you would want in your cheese to spice it up is, is what you can do now. So we will put it into smaller containers and divide it up accordingly. Out of my. That is how you make cheese. So I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions, give me a comment below. Or if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. And uh, check out our other videos on our homesteading channel. Thanks, guys. I like to smash them and make them kind of a uniform shape. So people want to slice it when